Behind every innovation is an inspired scientist. And behind every PBS program is a viewer like you. Get behind your PBS station. Your support makes a difference. Hello and welcome to Scientific American Frontiers. I'm Alan Alda. We all like to think that we understand our own minds, that we carefully weigh the pros and cons when we make a decision. And that after we've made it, even if we have cause to regret it, we know why we decided the way we did. Oh, sure, we know some choices are more emotional than rational. But even then, we think we're conscious of all the conflicting arguments that run through our minds as we make a choice. Well, in this program, we'll find out how utterly deluded we are as we join in experiments revealing just how sneaky and underhanded our brains can be. I've always thought of myself as a feminist, so I'm pretty sure I know how I'll do in this test of my reaction to women in the workplace. I am ready to begin. Okay, women, in fact, like Mazarin Banerjee, who's a professor here at Harvard University. The test is called the Implicit Association Test, and it begins simply enough. I have to pair the word in the center with one of the words above by pressing the E key with my left hand or the I key with my right. Well, it can be uh, the other way. Mazarin has told me to do this as fast as I can because it's the time I take to make the associations that's critical to the test. Now the target words have changed, but the task remains the same, to quickly decide whether the new words belong to the left or the right. But things are about to get trickier. It's the same thing, except now any one of these four will show up, and when it's career or male, you'll press the left key. When it's family or female, you'll press the right key. Career or male. Yes. So now the categories are described by two words, making it harder to decide where the new words belong. But since historically, male and career have gone together, this is like reinforcing the stereotype. Yeah, this is exactly. <laughs> The point of the test is to discover if lurking beneath my feminist convictions, I actually harbor a hidden bias against women in the workplace based on all the associations between man and career and women and family that bathed the culture I grew up in. So now just or male, right. career <laughs> or female. Okay, now you're testing me. Yeah, we're testing. The implicit association test is designed to ferret out any bias by seeing if it takes me fractionally longer to figure out where a word belongs when the pairing of the target words, in this case, family and male together and career and female, is slightly more difficult for my brain to accept. Corporation, family, yeah. <laughs> career, <laughs> brother, uh, management, uh, you were done. Slight. I could tell he has a slight. This is very good. You are, so let's see, you're showing a slight automatic association between male and career, and the, only 12% of the population that takes this test shows this bias. What you're seeing is that you're you're showing a much smaller bias than what many other people show. I'm up here. I, I make a strong association between male and career and female and family, even though that's not what I consciously that's express. Even though yeah. that's not what you live. And huh? that's not what I live, but in my world. And I don't know. I was, I'd be interested to know. Maybe many years of working in feminist causes made you show this lesson. So all those years of working in feminist causes didn't manage to totally eliminate my lingering association between female and family and male and career. What's astonishing, though, is that Mazarin is far worse, and she's not only enjoying a very successful career, she designed the test. Another of its designers is Brian Nozick, who personally developed the test he's taking now, intended to reveal hidden racial prejudice. These are the same faces you've seen many, many times. Many times, many times. In fact, I helped create the faces, right. so. Yeah. The heart of this test is to see whether it's easier for Brian to match words or pictures to the pairing of African-American with bad and European-American with good than when the pairings are reversed, European-Americans with bad and African-Americans with good. I can predict. Yeah. What do you think? Moderate. 
I'd moderate say, to strong. But, uh, I'll say moderate as well. Yeah. Strong ah. preference for white. <laughs> okay. You're taking this for the umpteenth time, yeah. and you still haven't caught on to the fact that you're a little <laughs> biased. <laughs> I think part of that is the insistence that my conscious beliefs still matter. It isn't that the fact that I keep showing these implicit biases mean that I'm a biased person, so I should just accept that and move on. It's that, no, I don't agree with those. I do have them, and I will admit to having those implicit biases, but I'm not going to let that rule what I would consciously want to have. It really is remarkable that here I am in Cambridge, Massachusetts, perhaps the liberal capital of the country, with two academics who pride themselves on their enlightened attitudes, only to discover that they have latent within them biases they would fervently deny if their own test hadn't revealed them. But all may not be lost. We have found in research and also in testing of myself that if I put myself in a situation where I think about positive black exemplars, um, I think about Michael Jordan and Colin Powell and people, Martin Luther King, who have had a very positive impact and who are also African American, I show much less bias immediately after thinking about those exemplars than if I hadn't thought about them before. Even simple things like the presence of an African American experimenter reduces race bias. Um, that the presence of a competent woman makes women's attitudes to math become more positive. Um, those kinds of studies um, sit, I think, in contradiction to the ways in which people like I thought about these. We thought they were learned over long periods of time, that they were entrenched, they were rigid, inflexible. And that does not appear to be the case. And I think that that's where the room for optimism is. So on the one hand, I would like people to take these data seriously when we look and sh when we can show the vast numbers of people who show the bias, I think we need to contend with that. On the other hand, what this work is showing is that it might be not that hard to shape environments that can change these even automatic kinds of oh, attitudes. Yeah. Yeah. You can find out if you harbor unconscious biases you would deny even to yourself by logging onto the Project Implicit website. There you'll find tests of attitudes towards such things as age and religion, as well as lighter fare like the Harry Potter movies versus the Lord of the Rings. Give it a try. You may be in for a shock. <laughs>